welcome back. It is a sheer joy to introduce you to my friends who are friends of the show and people you've met before. We have Wendy Darling, the literal godmother of having your great life, however you want it. She's there to help you find it. Erin Saxton, media and uh, TV expert, and she's there to help you get out into the world. But I want to introduce them a little differently this time because... These are my girls, and this is how we do it on a sunny, chilly afternoon, and I'm introducing them for a little bit of a different reason today, because I recently had the opportunity to interview the actor Helen Hunt, and our topic was reimagining yourself at every age, and... Wendy and Erin are my every age girls. We do tea for three on the regular. We bring our tea, which normally my viewers know I'm I'm usually good with my Good Day Orange County mug, but today it felt a little small on the conversation. <laughs> so I had to fill up with something a little bit more generous. And yes, it is just tea until we we turn off the recording. So in the meantime, in the meantime, we are here sharing our tea for three and dishing together with you. We're inviting you into our tea for three today because we are dishing on just reflections and musings. It's the end of the year. I'm not quite sure how we got here. It has been a weirdo year at best, and we are overdue for our tea for three session. So I'm going to start us off with just a topic like we usually do, reimagining ourselves at every age. We cover three decades. We have known each other for over a decade, and we're so happy to be here and just inviting you in to share our, our little tea for three session, or sesh, as, <laughs> as the cool kids would say. So welcome, girls. Thank you for being here. Cheers Absolutely. to you. Cheers to everyone. Happy, happy holiday wishes. And where, where should we start? Where did <laughs> you imagine yourselves today, 10 years ago? Oh. <laughs> I think Wendy's got a quickie in there for us. Go ahead. Well, you know, my life has changed and evolved so much. So of the three of us, I'm 72, so I'm the elder of the group. These, my girlfriends keep me youthful, which I so very much appreciate. And even just this, la a little over a year ago, I made a big move from San Diego to Sarasota, Florida. Um, I completed a relationship there and knew in my heart of hearts that one of the main reasons Sarasota pulled me in was I was to meet the love of my life. And I'm pretty sure that's already happened. Oh, I can't that believe she threw that gauntlet down. I mean, I don't know. I, I love that you did it. I love that you say it. And I love that we just recorded that because I'm just saying, had I done this and said that, yeah, and we would, we listening, would on she would have pronounced it on me. On <laughs> yeah. She, offline, she would have called me after this session. Erin, I just want you to know, I don't, I love you, but I think you're moving a little too fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm eating a few of my words, but at my age, why wait? There's no calories in your words, there so it's no okay. Calories. Eat away. More than that, there's hope, and I think that's- I actually, love that. Yeah. That's a key that's for everything going on in our lives right now, man. You got to have hope that you're going to achieve what you want. Absolutely. Yeah. And I will say, being 72, I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm not working the way I had. I've had a really awesome career and I'm still going to keep working, um, but maybe not as intensely as I had in the past. Um, so I'm at a little different place where I want to have fun and travel and do some other things. So what about you, Erin? The 10 year ago question? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, you're catching me on a, like a kind of a hinky day. So it, right. It all depends. So I'm 53 
And um, so 10 years ago, wait for it, that's math. I was 43 and I was very heavy 10 years ago. I will say that. And I battled with weight. Like I'm talking like, as well, you guys know, but you know, I'm like a hundred or 80 to a hundred pounds heavier. I'm wearing a bulky sweater, um, which is probably not the smartest thing for on camera, but it is like, I'm from New Jersey and it's like just gray and raw out and it just felt right. And a plaid hat also felt right. So, um, so in, in some respects, I'm feeling like really wonderful and I'm, because I'm not so mean to myself these days about weight, <laughs> like, you know, I've picked, I'm picking on myself for other things in my head, um, but I've changed topics. So I'm no longer bored with the weight debate I have in my head um, as a career. I think I, I think I would have thought I had more things figured out by now, 10 years ago. Um 10 years from now, I don't even want to be working. So that part's clear. So, you know, it it's just, I'm in a very realistic, you're, you're catching very real Aaron today. So I don't, I can't, even though I'm a marketing and media person and usually like, like to fluff things up, I'm not so sure I'm capable of doing that during this interview. So things are good. Things yeah. could be better. I can wear a bikini and my son's healthy and happy. And so I'm, I'll take it. I'm good. And you also have a very special person in your life too. Oh, I do. I'm so in love and he's amazing. And um, I just thought 10 years ago, like this shows how real I'm in a real mood I'm in. I thought 10 years ago, I would have found him already within that first year. I just found him over a year ago. So to me, I'm dealing with the like, I'm grateful that I found him and I know he's my person forever, but I, I do kind of feel a little like, oh, I get him now at 53 and he's 61. So there are parts of me where I'm like, I don't think it's very fun fate that I only met him now when I've been divorced for 18 years. You know what I mean? So there's, I'm going through some of that stuff in my head, but so I'm grateful that he's here. Does that make sense? Just let me remind you of our age difference. <laughs> and so all, I, all can be considered, Wendy, you've been married twice. No, we go into that. Let's more than it. that. So I'm just saying I've been married once at 53. <laughs> I'm just okay. saying. And, I, and I've been married zero at 63. So, okay. Let's so they're not, this isn't going to compute. I'm just saying I no want married. us to find our people soon because it's sad that we've been searching for our people for so long. Yeah. That's all. Me, yeah. It was a big learning curve, obviously. And so, I think so I that's part of the conversation though, right? We've been searching. So it makes it sound like without our people, we haven't done everything we've wanted to, or we haven't actually lived a great life up until now. So that kind of leads me into a, a next question of, so on a scale of one to five, where are you with life right now? And Aaron, you know, wonky day, that's fine. Back up to yesterday, you know? Like yeah, <laughs> no, I'll, I, I can answer in gen, in generality. So when did you want me to go for it? I mean, yeah, I, so I'm at a five, I, I love my life. I, I love it. I'm, I'm just saying I'm a fine tuner always. And so I'm choosing if we're doing five, five is the best. I'm going like slam dunk five. I absolutely don't need to have a person in my life to still claim it a five. It's not a five. It was a, I would have said it was a five two years ago and I hadn't even met my person yet. So that's just, I really want to be clear on that. And and part of what I tell myself is that I've worked so much on myself as about like what I struggle with and just my unrealisticness and things like that, that 10 years ago, I wasn't even the same person to have met that person. You know what I'm saying? Like I had so much work to do that 
I just, I guess I did it in the amount of time and then that person appeared. Um, and I think I'm just a better mom, a better best friend. I'm a better daughter. So I don't need, I'm not attracting this great man because I'm now this great person. I've always been a great person. Um, I just, I think I've gotten myself where I'm probably maybe even better at relationships because I'm just older or more mature or something. I'm not sure. There's a bunch of factors, but I'm claiming five. Oh, that's okay, nice. Wendy, what about you? you know, if it would have just been a few weeks ago, I probably would have been a three. It's popped up to a four. And normally it's a four or five, but this year has been tough on me. I had an injury. I had to have hip replacement surgery. I, so, so, and I was living in a new community. I mean, how silly of me to leave my beloved San Diego and move to a place where I barely knew anyone. So, so now it's a four, but I have a feeling it's going to creep to a five pretty fast here. Well, Lauren, how about you? So, so if I go back to the, the 10 year question, you know, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a medical crisis mm. and it took a year, a little over a year to come through that. So if I were at that point, I had plenty of time to project <laughs> because I was in bed 18 hours a day. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, at that point, I would have expected that all things would be, you know, honey and, and sugar plums by now. And, and looking back on it, it's been amazing in so many different ways, but for the things that both of you point to, right, lots of work to do, lots of interesting, th interesting things that, that show up in front of you, and then you have to make choices of... Mm -hmm you know, do I want this or do I want that? And how much, how much is, uh, is enough? And I've, I've always said that my life was 85% there and anywhere between 85 and hundred, I was, I was really good. And that was kind of the space that I left for a relationship that said any relationship has to elevate the quality of my life, not take me away from it. And, mm -hmm. and many times that was just the reality, but of course that's all hindsight. So in general, given this past year, you know, my mom had a stroke. I've re relocated to the East coast to be with my family. Uh, since COVID I've been, you know, reconfiguring life and work and, and family time. I haven't lived this close to my family in probably <laughs> So yeah. it's it's really interesting having the bulk of your social life and your interactions be with your family. That not good or bad, just different and new for me. So um loving hanging out with my my 14-year-old nephew and my 12-year-old niece and certainly learning new cool words like sitch and sesh. But <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm going to look at my, yeah, I would say I'm somewhere between a 3.5 and a four right now, just trying to get things on balance and feeling like, okay, as I round toward the end of this year, um, I'm going to call it a win because there have been so many weirdo things that literally just, just hit me on the head and then I bounced back and I did feel a bit like a weeble who fell down and, and fortunately bounced back and I will say just just to share with you guys you know these these times that we spend together like this that we're now sharing with our good day community these have been some of the most meaningful moments and conversations and and God knows soul saving you that know that is so true because without my girlfriends and without my, my, you know, closest, nearest and dearest and the opportunity to Zoom with them or FaceTime or even just a call, it doesn't matter. Um, these, these times are the ones I really appreciate the most. And I, I just want to put this out to others to say, if you're not doing this, if you're still feeling isolated, if you're still separated, if you're not you know, getting together with people in person as much as you could, then certainly, certainly, please call your people, reach out and and make this time, whether it's T for two or three or 10, it doesn't really matter. It's it's just friend time and it's heart time and soul time. So so yeah, you guys, you guys make life better on the regular for me. And thank you for that. <laughs> Well, thank you, because without the two of you, 
I, you have kept me above water, above ground. I don't know what. It's made a huge difference in my life. Oh, I love the two of you as well. Yeah. Huge. So next question would be, of this last year, what one thing would you change? <laughs> just one. Just one. Just one. We're not going off the edge. I don't even want to go first. Okay. <laughs> I don't know yet this answer. Well, you know, I think... The, the one obvious change is I wish that I hadn't torn the ball joint in my hip and had to have hip replacement surgery. Um, that's the one thing I would change. But but I'm grateful, first of all, that I had an awesome surgeon who I just love. My girlfriend, Erin, actually flew down here. I had girlfriends come here to take care of me the first two and a half weeks. I thought it was pretty twisty manipulative of me to get everybody to come here you're a dark mistress yeah. next <laughs> time find something a little bit uh, more subtle. yeah yeah i agree <laughs> yeah so that would be the one change and and i would say i wish i i would wish my mom hadn't had a stroke yeah of course right and be and i think what's interesting uh health issues are always the first thing that I think we would change, right? Nobody wants to see anyone go through ill health. And especially if we've been there at the same time, it's in those moments that we do learn so much and, and reflect on, you know, the fact that yes, it totally took me down because I live, you know, a couple hundred feet from them. So it's as if we were in the same house, even though we're not. Um, but I moved here intentionally so I could get to them quickly. And that this was very telling that she had the stroke in front of me mm. while we were talking and that I could identify it and get her to wow. the hospital within minutes. I mean, what three minutes, you? three minutes, the paramedics were in the apartment and within 40 minutes, she was in the scan in the hospital and, and we were on it and those things made a difference. And so I realize, you know, if, if, and I do think about this, and I think we all do, what if this had not happened mm -hmm. and how would my life look different? And, um, you know, it, it takes you in a whole different direction. And, um, and so other things become less important when something suddenly shows up and becomes your priority. So that would be the one thing I would absolutely change this year. Now, Aaron. I would change the fact that I started watching The Bachelor. <laughs> okay. Don't tell me the ending. I need to share. I, I'm, I'm not caught up. First of all, I'm, I'm not, not caught up. up. I'm not caught up. I'm not caught up. But I, and I, I just The Bachelor to for the You're first welcome. time. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I, I am like making cursing dolls. Uh, I, I, I was, my life would have been fine without watching that show. And now- <laughs> You can't I, get that I don't know if I'm cringed or whatever. And I started watching it with the golden bachelor. So like, and now like Wendy's got me on bachelor in paradise and then there's farmer wants a wife. Like I'm a TV producer. I don't watch reality TV like that. And I think that's, I would, I think I would change that back to I'm good, but now I've, now I can't unsee stuff. I hear you. I did try. I tried to watch Golden Bachelor on the recommendation of a friend, not one of you. Thank you very much. Um, and I couldn't get through the first 20 minutes. And I decided that that was 20 minutes of my life I couldn't get back. So I wasn't going down that trail. So thank you for confirming. That. It's listen, let me just say it's delicious fun. And I do say that it's amazing that the network finally put up something of an older demographic. I agree. I absolutely I agree. love it. I don't disagree with that. So I'm loving that just like I would one day love a female president or one day love a whatever. Like I love positive shifts. I don't need all sorts of change because we have a lot of that regardless of everybody's opinions about everything. So if some things this year are changing just way too much for me to keep up with. Um, but when it comes to stereotypical things like that, like the like the Bachelor, I I'm enjoying that. Um, that said, I think I I've now realized that if I were to be on that show, I would, and I'm not because I found my person. But I would only ever then be 
the person looking for love. There's no way yeah. that There's I would no be way. one of many Me because neither. as as a TV producer, they're all subject to what the producer is going to say and manipulate, even if there's no malice intended by the production staff, they still need ratings. They still need to make it juicy. So I have follow-up questions for Jerry and his bachelorettes. Like I would have cut side deals with them all behind the scenes. Like, listen, I'll pretend I'm in a shot. I'll even pretend I slept with you that night, but I'm probably not. And I don't want to go on the family days because you're not allowed to say you love me. And now all three of you say they love you. I find that to be an imbalance. I have a problem with that. I These know. are the things that I wish I could take back. Okay. I was up in New Jersey when this aired for the first time. And let's just say there were moments even between us. And so I know I keep saying I'm not going to watch it. Now, I have to say, I love The Golden Bachelor because of the demographic. And we'll just leave it at that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Give me historical fiction and period pieces any day of the week. <laughs> Gilded Age is- I'm watching that right now. I Gilded hear it's Age really amazing. It's okay. Amazing. I mean, Julian amazing. Fellows can write and produce, and I'll, oh. watch, I'll watch the rehearsals. I don't care. I know. Um, They're so their costumes alone, Lauren, right? Yes. As a fashion, yeah. How in the person. world did you wear that? I know. One I feel that like one woman her. had a hat, and it looked like turkey legs connected together. And yet she <laughs> worked it. She made it look good. It was very Bjork of her. Um, yeah, there was, they did not. You're a fashion total Maven expert. There's no way that was the fashion in the Gilded Age. Do you agree? Well, no, I don't. I believe that they were absolutely looking for ways to one up each other. And if that if you had a designer, a milliner who could do that for you, you were going to put as many pins in your head as it took to balance that thing on top of your head. I just I, you know, I feel their corseted pain. That's, uh, that's and the I, use I, I, of I silk them. flowers just in their hair and hats alone. I it it no wonder it became such a booming artificial flower business. You know, just that alone like I <laughs> but it was a, it was a very it was a very interesting time I mean you have to imagine everything before that also yeah. I mean Victorian England you know that's that's what they were competing with so um sure. you Delicious. know if, if one is good 13 is better is is kind of the mantra <laughs> so so as we reimagine our lives would you direct things more or would you just react to things differently oh I'll go first that's easy I'm a director shocker shocking. <laughs> what shocking what <laughs> like I could have answered for you what you would say you, you both could have answered yes okay that's all I have to say you are yeah. listen we are all relatively high director types there's there's no question um but at the same time are there things that you might have reacted to differently in hindsight? Hmm. I think I tend to overreact in the past or over not, re you know, when you say overreact sometimes or most of the time it, it means negatively. What I'm saying, I think I've done is thought about it way too darn much. Okay. I put too much weight into the meaning of something rather than just let it go. I've had to like psychoanalyze something or really get into the, you know, the DNA of it. And now I'm just like, eh, I find that the most interesting in the last, like, I cared if people really liked me and you guys know this and I'm, I still want people to like me, but about five years ago, something shifted, right? So in my late forties, I'm, I thought it's not that I care if people don't like me, but I'm not going to proactively hunt down to find out if they like me. You know, I think that's one of the things that I believe comes with age and experience. You know, I think that, I, you know, now, for the most part, whatever people think, you can think whatever you want. And, and that's totally okay. I still like to be liked. But you know, is 
there's a lot of whatever that can sometimes go in my head. It's like, whatever. So I don't, I don't get too terribly concerned. In terms of the question you're asking too, I'm going to say, for me, it was a different year because usually I'm very positive, I'm very active. And I think because I was so extremely inactive, I started to tank some, which is unusual for me. And also not knowing many people at all here. There, I was too isolated. And I really wanted to bring that up because I think, unfortunately, that's very true for many people today for a variety of reasons. And I really had to push, and it's kind of like what you were talking about, Lauren, you know, that I think I just combined you. I went, Lauren. <laughs> I know, I was like, I'm not really sure who she's talking to, but I'm just gonna nod just in case it was me. And okay. I'll take it as a compliment. I'm yeah. fine being so, molded. I'll think you. like Lauren anytime, so it's okay. Mix me yeah. up with her. So I think that's why it's more important than ever to be willing to reach out because if we don't, if we don't reach out, or if we don't tell somebody, you know, I'm having a bad hair day, um, nobody's going to know that we need support. And even if you're like me and you don't know many people, then call who you do or go volunteer someplace so that you can feel more connected. I think it's becoming so critical to make those efforts. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And I also, I, I believe it's interesting that you guys said that. And I don't think we've ever had this part of the conversation before, but um, I definitely in the past cared too much what other people thought mm -hmm. and and would think a thousand times before moving ahead or try to look at every possible scenario or how could I do this better? Or how could I avoid conflict? How could I avoid a negative outcome? I do believe being, and because we are all to varying degrees, although quite a lot, I mean, we all speak on stage, we're all in the media, we've all been pretty publicly present through our lives. And so it's not that we don't want to be liked and it's not that we're trying to be controversial. I mean, literally this show is my favorite non-controversy zone on the planet. I'm literally just here to showcase good stuff because I feel like we don't get enough of that on a daily basis. And at the same time, we want to feel good about who we are and what we're doing and letting other people dump their stuff on us is not our business. Mm. So I kind of developed this little bit of a force field around me over, over the last year, especially, and said, I think I really just want to own what makes me happy and trust that the right people will then show up and follow along. So I feel like I'm supposed to say something because I feel like there's someone watching this right now that's going to be like, oh my gosh, she's freaking me out that she said it. So it's not something necessarily that I have, but I, I notice like my mom and I notice some friends and family members, like they get in, they know what they would like to have different. They know they need to get out and about and be social. COVID probably kicked their butts and then it locked them into a pattern and they might have been changing into a different age group at the time of COVID, like turning a corner and maybe naturally they were going to like stay at home more or have quieter nights, but then COVID and a lockdown, like just halted things prematurely. So what I want to say is, I'm not so sure, like one one of you just said, like, well, you have to get out or maybe volunteer or whatever. And this is what I think we're supposed to bring up. The person that feels like the person that would probably benefit from volunteering, I feel they're already like, yeah, but where would I go? Where would I volunteer? It's so great. I hear people say that all the time, but I don't even know. And And I think if we could talk for just maybe a few minutes about like I, I couldn't get my mom to volunteer right now. And yet she needs, like, and she's not old, but she mentally, she's just stuck. And so um, if it's not me going out with her or doing something, like, I don't know. So can we talk about being different ages, like, and for people watching at home, like it's, I don't think it's as easy as just going out to volunteer. So I personally think, that I'm trying to schedule because my son left home, right? He's 19. And so I, I don't live with John. Like, I, so there's days where I'm very lonely 
There's days I love that I'm alone. And then there's days where I'm surrounded by so many people and I've never felt more alone in my life. Right. Let all that land, by the way. So I'm not so sure about any of that, except to say for the person is, I'm supposed to be talking to at home is I personally knew that if I didn't schedule things every week, whether I wanted to or not, like my introvert hates when my extrovert makes plans because it's my introvert that has to take a shower and get ready to go out to the dinner plans. My extrovert thought it was a good idea two weeks ago. (laughs) I don't know if this is making sense to anybody, but I have a constant, like, I, I have a constant conversation in my head where I'm like, I know I need to schedule things. I signed up for tennis. I did things because if I don't schedule things, then I am by myself truly for a week at a time where I'm not seeing my son because he lives in New England or John might be on a business trip. So I'm trying to schedule things. And so to me, it's not about volunteering. It's literally starting out and just looking at your week and your month and just maybe making four things to do in every month. So you see four things on a calendar and that's how I would start. How would you guys start? All those things are great. I would take it even one step back and say, I walk the dog. Right. I I look for places that I can sit with her that are around people. Yes. She's a very pe- she loves people watching. I love people watching. Notoriously, somebody sits down, pets my dog, start up a conversation. I think the the real key to what you're saying is just get out the door. One hundred percent. And find, you know, find a coffee shop that you yes. like, that you can take, take your computer, take your phone, take a book. Oh my God, who reads books anymore? Take a book, just sit there, be around people. I think that's the starter. And for you, for your introvert, Erin, because I have that too. My introvert uh-huh. is Me, really please. happy in my bathrobe. <laughs> for sure. She's really happy being here, doing whatever we do all day, doing nothing. Um, However, the getting dressed, the getting out, and then finding places where the people are just interesting means the energy is interesting. And yeah. I am the, and and for me, I'm I'm always looking for, oh, where do they have some gluten-free food that I haven't tried? Because that matters to me. And even if it means going to a different supermarket and just talking to the people who are stocking the shelves and asking them different questions. It's really about engagement. And this it makes a I'm difference. Thinking. You feel that energy. I even sometimes will go to a movie and I know some people who are older than me, like, and Wendy, I, I know you're older, so I'm going to like, we did promise it. Like, I don't know how you feel about going to a movie by yourself. I'm I, totally I, fine with that. Okay, I'm, I'm, fine totally, with it. I'm totally fine traveling by myself. Yeah, I am too. So to me, like you go to the snack counter, like you're still showering. I think the goal is shower, number one. Like, right? There's some days where I'm like, why would I shower? I mean, not to sound gross, but why? Why would I even get out of my pajamas? And you know what? Sometimes it's okay to go out without a shower. Oh, Just 100%. Get yeah. It. So ladies, I love you. And we are going to wrap this up right here. But in oh. case our viewers want to chat more with you, let's, Wendy, where can where can our viewers find you? Probably the easiest is wendydarling.com. Uh, there's a place that you can uh, reach out to me, have a little chat, a little heart to heart, and that would be lovely. And you, Erin? My website is theerinnetwork.com. And then there we'll have all my socials and stuff. And we will post all that here. Ladies, thank you for sharing your tea with me and with our GDOC community. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us and wishing you all happiness through the holidays and into the next year. We look forward to seeing you then. 